is one of the limiting factors in plant growth. The more the light reaches the leaves of the plant, the more the plant can photosynthesize, therefore the more it can grow and develop. From this, it would be fairly logical to assume that a bright light, either an artificial light or the sun, directly above the plant, with nothing obstructing the progress like clouds, would provide optimal growth conditions for a plant. But, like many things in life, the answer is far from obvious. And most plants have a considerable number of leaves. Those at the top of the canopy receive the most light, but it requires quite a lot of effort on behalf of the plant to get the leaves up that high on the plant. This can be in terms of growing a long trunk or stem, then moving the water and other nutrients up that high. But it's worth it for the energy those leaves generate. Now lower down the plant has more leaves, but because the top leaves are quite efficient at extracting the useful light, far less light reaches these leaves. They don't produce as much as the top leaves. But as the plant doesn't have to invest as much in these lower leaves, it still makes it worthwhile to have these leaves as every little bit of energy captured can allow the plant to outcompete its neighbours. This does mean that when the light is directly overhead, the plant will capture most of the light which hits it directly. Of course, any of the light which is around the plant either will be taken up by the neighbouring plants or it will actually hit the ground, not be used by any plants. So what happens if the light has to pass through thin clouds or the material that commercial growers often use in what's known as a polytunnel? Well, a tiny proportion of the light is actually absorbed, but most of the light is now scattered. This means that the light now approaches the plant from all different angles rather than just the top. So rather than the top leg of the leaves getting the maximum amount of light, it's now any leaves on the kind of the outer dome of leaves of the plant are now getting the maximum amount of light. Also, a far greater number of leaves on the kind of the next layer down or second in the queue are now getting the light. Now, depending upon the type of plant and the arrangement of the leaves, this can mean that a diffused light source could mean that a plant actually uses double the amount of light that could from the same power from a direct overhead light source. So, other than for commercial growers, making widespread use of polytunnels to grow food, does this form of cloudy day growth have any wider implications for our planet? Well, if plants are photosynthesizing more and receiving more, then we're actually removing more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which means that we're reducing the amounts of carbon dioxide gases and greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. This may help to explain what happens after large volcanic eruptions. Now, generally, a massive volcanic eruption releases substantial amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. At the same time, they can also scatter massive amounts of dust high up into the atmosphere, which can actually take years to completely settle back down to Earth. It's probable that the plants actually may take advantage of this diffused light provided by the scattering action of the dust in the atmosphere to absorb the extra CO2 in the atmosphere which has also been produced by the volcano and return the planet to a normal balanced state. In fact it's actually possible that the additional plant growth may actually absorb more CO2 than is actually produced by the volcanoes. But this additional plant growth may not be entirely down to diffused light. The dust in the atmosphere may also produce what's known as condensation nuclei, which are the basic starting points for rain clouds. So areas may get more rainfall than normal, may in turn result in substantial additional plant growth. All of this does go to show that our environment is far more complicated and interlinked than it seems, and even something as obvious that direct light is the best for plants may not actually be that obvious at all.